Good morning, everyone. Um, I hope everyone's a little bit awake. I'm, a, I'm from the West Coast, so it's a little bit early for us. The coffee ran out earlier, too, so these are a bad combination of things. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about some of the, um, some of the some exciting things that are happening at uh, Intel Nirvana. This is the, the new AI brand that we're launching from Intel. So it's really an exciting time to be in the industry. I mean, things that we, were, we thought were next to impossible five or six years ago are now actually quite easy. In fact, we're taking it for granted how easy we can build an image classifier that beats human performance. Um, I mean, think about that from computer science class that you took 10 years ago. That was just not a possible task. So I think, I just, I hope everyone can appreciate kind of what, what kind of transformations happened in the last few years. And so we start seeing use cases in industry, um, some of the things we're scrolling through here, um, they're becoming commonplace. And, you know, it's been said that technology, when it's, when it's really fully developed, kind of, uh, you know, eases into the background. And I think we're see seeing that right now with AI. So let's talk a little bit about what powered um, this, this revolution. I think there are three main things that I see. Uh, Moore's Law is actually one of them. The capability to iterate, build these gradient descent algorithms that actually find these useful solutions in these very large parameter spaces um, is, is something that uh, is underappreciated. We really didn't have that capability 10, 15 years ago. Um, silicon got to a point where we actually could uh, stuff enough transistors onto a chip and, and build something that's fast enough and can do enough compute cycles on a large data set. The next piece of that is data itself. So I think the last 15 years, probably, you could say we spent a lot of money on data storage. Every enterprise company out there has you know, huge storage arrays. Cloud computing became prevalent. Um, storing data became cheap. And that enabled us, to, in conjunction with compute, to start building these kinds of models. And I think this is how we're really going to start approaching intelligence, is the data plus the compute. Another very important piece of it is also the demand. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we're talking about all these products. Now we kind of take it for granted. We want, our, we want our products to recognize our voice. In fact, we actually now kind of want our products to get better at, at things as we use them, right? That's actually not so easy. Uh, I want my phone to understand me better than understands every one of you. Is that really that easy to do? Not really. Uh, we're working on it. And I think these techniques are maturing to the point where we can actually start satisfying that demand. But the reason everyone is here today is because this is exciting and everyone wants to see these kind of things come to fruition. <coughs> So at this, one, one of the big motivators for me in this has actually been that, in this field of AI, is that you know, we look at a brain. So on the left there, we have some, some, some cool-looking neurons, right? And your brain uses about 20 watts of energy. Um, that's not a lot, right? So just to kind of calibrate people, your CPU and your laptop is using you know, 20 to 40 watts of energy. Presumably, your brain is doing more computation um, than, your, than your laptop is. Uh, maybe that's not true for everyone, but... <laughs> Um, probably not for me without coffee this morning. <laughs> um, but I think that's, that's been, uh, just that very simple fact has been a huge motivator for me in this field. Like, how can we do better? Clearly, synthetic computation can get better, um, and we have a long way to go. We have an existence proof in our heads uh, today that we can do this better. So what is intelligence, really? So it's really the ability to take in information through our senses. That's what brains do process it, find some useful structure in it, and drive a useful output. Um, in the context of an animal, humans or any other animal, it's really about survival. Finding food, you know, these kinds of things. Uh, surviving through the world, evading predators. Um, but in, in industry, we're looking for ways to improve businesses. And I think the same sense, process, act actually exists there as well. And so um, the tools we're building are going to make that easy and accessible uh, for the rest of industry, not just in the realm of you know, the, the biggest high-tech players out there. Okay. So under Intel Nirvana, we think of this as uh, a holistic picture. We call it speeding up the innovation cycle. And what I mean by that is really taking this whole loop where we... We bring data in, call that the sensing part. We process it. That's the deep learning and the AI part that we're all excited about. And there's the action piece, right? We, we need to deploy these solutions in some useful fashion, whether that be a data center where we're munging through a bunch of data, we're putting it on a phone to enable a new experience, or we're driving a new website experience. So 
it's a very sim similar thing that we see in nature, and we're seeing that happen now here. And I think what's going to drive this forward is, is obviously the tip of the spear research is always extremely important. But we've actually hit a critical mass now that I think we, we understand enough about some of the, the computational primitives that actually allow us to solve these kind of problems in the real world. So now it's really about tools, um, making it easy and accessible, um, bringing the cost of things down. Right now, it's, it's still very difficult to scale AI solutions. I mean, some companies out there um, are very good at it because they have um, bespoke experts working on these things. But we really want to make this easier for people to use. So one thing also is uh, competition in this space is, is a, it's actually a very important thing. We need different um, suppliers uh, building solutions and, and competing against each other to, to drive the field forward. I'm a big believer in that. And so important metrics for what we're building are actually a very important thing. Um, you know, we've talked about flops, you know, uh, floating point ops per second uh, is a big metric out there. You know, that's, that's something that I actually find a little bit um, um, lacking because it's not a really good metric of, of real world performance. The consequence that has is that you tend to see people optimizing for metrics that, peop that, that drive buying decisions. So we actually put forth a new metric that I'll talk about in just a moment. The three major components are memory bandwidth. This is basically how much data you can shove into and get out of memory that's close to a chip. Precision. This is basically how many bits we represent each of our operations with. Um, neural networks are actually very good and tolerant to the kind of noise that low precision um, uh, adds to, their, to the training regime. So uh, unlike other types of computation in scientific, in scientific computing, for instance, where we need very high fidelity to a, you know, a real number, um, in neural networks we can actually get away with lower bit precisions and actually get some advantages from doing that. And the last piece is utilized ops. So what I mean by that is how many of these operations per second in this precision through this memory bandwidth can you realistically do? And so um, we relate it together with something that um, we coined called computational capacity. And so basically, we're taking uh, the precision, which is B, memory bandwidth, which is M, um, times the, the utilized ops. And so this is kind of a metric that I think is actually pretty useful for comparing various hardware platforms out there. If people start optimizing around something like this for their, for their uh, hardware stack, we'd actually have, I think, uh, more relevant solutions uh, in, the, in the industry today. So beyond hardware, the next piece is software. As I mentioned, tools are super important here. Um, this is something that, again, we, we're very excited about because we actually just released uh, a few big tools today. One of them is um, Intel Nirvana Graph. So what this is, is it's, an, it's, an ability, it's, a, it's a layer that abstracts hardware to some extent. It's a, a graph execution layer, and you can find more information on this in, uh, at intelnirvana.com. It's something that enables us to support many different hardware platforms with an abstraction of um, uh, basic primitives from various deep learning frameworks. So the idea is that we can support TensorFlow or Neon, which is our framework, um, on multiple hardware platforms without having to optimize for each one of those uh, frameworks over and over again. So this is super important, again, for the industry because we're supporting our own hardware, Intel CPUs, as well as the new stuff we have coming out as well as competitors, GPUs, um, FPGAs, things like that. And so as part of this, um, our framework, we call it our reference standard for framework, it's called Neon. Um, we actually just released 2.0 today, which will be um, supporting Intel architecture, CPUs, uh, in, a, in a highly optimized fashion on top of MKL. So please go check it out on GitHub. Uh, feel free to start it. <laughs> Uh, I've got to put my shameless plug in there. Um, but uh, yeah, we're very excited about getting these things out into the world because as, as we are able to add new models and, and, and build the community around it, we can really make it easier and accessible across this entire stack. And you'll start seeing more, th more announcements from us in the uh, next few months. So we're seeing this cycle happening already, actually. This is actually something that we started at Nirvana, the startup that I, uh, I, I co-founded. And we're continuing now as part of Intel. We're actually seeing these verticals um, start to take up AI in a big way. And I think it's because it really adds directly to the bottom line. And you know, a few examples of that are here. 
These are just a couple of companies that we've worked with. There are many more as an enterprise supplier. We can't really talk about all of them, but um, I think what you're seeing here is a broad array of use cases. It's not just tech. It's not just finance. It's oil and gas. It's insurance. It's lots of different things. So this is how the world is going to evolve. This is how the world of computation is going to evolve. And I think this is super exciting from my perspective, being a computer architect and a neuroscientist, to see these things happening in my lifetime. So with that, I thank you for your time and enjoy the rest of the uh, event.